This video is brought to you by Sporlin, quality, integrity, and tradition. Well, I'm getting ready to go up onto the roof. Um, got some exhaust fans not working. Got a couple belts just in case. I don't know if those are the right size or not. Wanted to talk about the whole backpack thing, right? I don't care what brand you buy, but when you're climbing extension or uh, roof ladders, you know, your best bet is to rope equipment up or use a backpack as long as it's not too heavy. So that way you can use both hands to climb the roof. It's really important that you do that. Um, you don't want to get hurt. Trust me from experience. I've fallen off ladders. It's not a fun thing. So let's get up top and see what's going on. We come up onto the roof. They called late last night saying, the uh, exhaust fan over their flat top was not working. Look at that. The grease is disintegrating or deteriorating the roof. It's nasty. This is their flat top fan right here. I know them, but we're gonna check every fan because big picture stuff, right? So we're gonna open this guy up. These fans are pretty greasy. I'm definitely gonna be emailing some people, sending up pictures of the roof damage. I took off, I carry rubber gloves with me everywhere, like nitro gloves, so that way I could just throw them away and don't ruin my other gloves. Also, at any given moment, all their exhaust fans are gonna turn on and scare the you know what out of me as usual. Cold grease, that makes it a nightmare. Well, that's interesting. Belt doesn't look bad at all. Let's go ahead and turn off the fan. Ooh. Ooh, that's not good because they said it wasn't pulling smoke. Uh, I don't see anything going on here. Belt's pretty snug. Let's hinge this guy. Ooh, look at that grease. That is disgusting. They need to clean that fan bad. Look at that. All right, well. That's interesting. I mean, what is that noise though? Huh, that's interesting. Better go downstairs and turn on all their exhaust fans and see what's going on here. I wonder, yeah, they said flat top. That's not bad at all. Huh. So this guy's running. I opened up the motor starter panel and everything's fine in there minus there's an overload missing but it was on a 115 volt fan so it's not as critical but should be there. Um, the fan has a interesting vibration to it but that's going to be the amount of grease built up in there. That's interesting. I don't know what to tell him. We better make sure this is running in the right direction. There's an arrow right there and it's it's running in the right direction. They said it's just not pulling up smoke very well. All right, I'm gonna go through and look at every fan. Um, while I was downstairs, the grease filters look to be in pretty good shape. Didn't see a problem with that. Um, there's a couple things going on. The vibration caused that conduit to break. That's one thing, but it's interesting because this is what they were complaining about. But again, like I said, we'll go, we'll check that one out too because it's right across. Maybe that's the problem. Um, but we're looking at everything. So this one right here, that pulley's toast. Those little lines you see, I could feel them. They're definitive and they're eating the belts up. So we're gonna get them new pulleys for this guy. This guy's doing the same thing. So I got the information. Motor pulley's a one VP 50 by seven eighths, this guy. And then this one, the driven pulley is a four and three quarters by inch and three sixteenths. It has an AX59 belt. We'll get new pulleys for this guy. And I'm gonna go through and look at every other fan. Um, let's jump onto that one now. Okay, so this one is their fryer and this one looks to be loose to me. So let's let it slow down. And the bearings sound bad. Yeah, this one's definitely loose. So this one is right across from that one. More than likely, this is the problem. I mean, it's not horrible, but yeah, it's loose. So we'll definitely tighten that up. Um, and then we're gonna investigate all these. Oh, this pulley's trash too. 
Got a bunch of pulleys here. I did a video changing these exhaust fans a couple years back. We changed them all at the same time. This pulley's fine. This one needs to be changed. It's got a nice little notch in it. So we're gonna go around looking at every single one and tightening them up as needed. Look at that. That's gonna be a electrical short when it rains. It's broken. So, um, and then this had vibrated off. A lot of this, I bet you anything, is because they're not cleaning these things and they're just sitting here vibrating. So we'll bring that up to them too, put a new disconnect switch. See, sometimes it's worth it to come out on a Sunday. <laughs> it's Sunday about 8 a.m. right now. Uh, May 7th, I think. I think that's what it is. May 6th, May 7th, something like that. Um, okay, cool, well, let's keep on going. So the one that I thought was the problem, the flat top, I the belt was just, I mean, ever so slightly loose, but I noticed that I'm tightening it, like, because you have a tensioner bolt right here, and it's not doing anything because the belt is too big. It's an AX21 and it's touching this. So when you're trying to tighten it, it's not doing anything. Um, it just so happened that I brought up some AX20 belts. So I'm gonna put the AX20s on there, take the 21s off, and then uh, that way we can tension it appropriately. It wasn't bad, but it was just a little bit loose. So loosen that up. It's possible that an AX21 would be fine and that this one's just stretched out, but it's not gonna hurt just to throw an AX20 on there. We got a spare to drop in there. That's much better. Almost there. Oh yeah, good to go. There's a nut, I'll show you right now, that backs it up so it doesn't come loose. So this nut, you tighten that when you're done. You loosen it and then you move this in and out to put tension on it. That's much better. You can see it's nowhere near here. It's not bottoming out on that. And we got a spare in there now. So the pulley on this one looks okay. I can feel the slightest bit of something in there, but I think they've got a little more life out of it. Um, they definitely need to clean the fan though. So we're gonna turn this guy on. Again, going in the right direction. So this is their flat top area. Um, let's go ahead and get onto this fryer one now. So the pulleys are messed up, but they're not that bad, so. This one's doing the same. I'm kind of thinking we need to change these all to AX20s. Like I can't tighten it really anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it. Slide the old one off. Let's hope that this other one is a good belt. It doesn't, I don't think it's worn. I don't know though. And now we're gonna tighten it. We might have to grab that AX20 out of the other one. Yeah, we're gonna have to grab the AX20. This one's doing the same thing. We'll have to bring back some AX20 spares when we come back. So that 21, that was, uh, I'm pretty confident that when I installed these fans a couple years ago, they came with 21s because we wouldn't have put bigger belts on there. I don't usually carry belts in my truck except for the emergency one. I just so happen to have two AX20s, so lucky for them. The thing about belts, you know, I made a video a while back using an emergency belt and a lot of people were criticizing me because I should have all the belts in my truck. The problem is, is that I don't change belts that often. A lot of these customers don't have me do maintenance for them. I just do emergency maintenance. And, uh, you know, you gotta draw a line somewhere because all the parts that I keep in my truck, I'm essentially paying for those and they're just sitting there in my truck and I've already paid for them. And they're not making me money until they do. So 
you know, you gotta draw a line somewhere and be like, you know what, I'm not gonna stock those in my truck. Because the more truck stock you have, the more money you have out on the line. So it's one of those things. That's why we keep emergency belts to get us going and then we come back with the right parts. It just so happened that today I have these 21. Okay, got that nice and snug. Now we're gonna open the fan up and look at the inside. It's not too bad. Looks okay. Let's make sure it's going in the right direction. It is, it's moving in the right direction. And obviously it's spinning faster now because it shot stuff out of it. Someone lost the wing nuts. There was no wing nuts on this one. So I'll have to bring some of those back with me. They have filter changers that come up here. So I can see one of the washers. I'll look around, maybe they're on the ground. Nope, nothing on the ground. So we'll get some wing nuts and bring them back. Let's start going through the rest of these fans. This fan wasn't changed a couple years ago. This is an original fan. not too bad but I'm gonna tighten it a little bit the belt is really hot though but probably because it's loose so we'll tighten it up there happens to be an AX 20 in this one so the cool thing is that now we'll change every belt to the to the same size except for the big giant fan so they'll all have the same so they have to so we don't have to keep as many spares up here basically so that's one good thing yeah, so that guy's good. Make sure it's going, they all go the same direction. Yep, going in the right direction. So we're good on that one. We got one more fan to go now. This one is vibrating to all hell. Yeah, this fan is toast. So we'll be quoting a couple new fans for them too. When you're dealing with exhaust issues, don't ever forget about the makeup air units because the makeup air units are a critical part of the exhaust system. They make up for the air that's being lost, but a good majority of the time, they also create an air curtain to try to help contain the smoke, um, the way that they're designed and the way that they drop down in most hoods. Not all hoods, but most hoods. So always wanna make sure makeup air belts are tight because they could be part of the reason why things are smoky why things are rolling out that belt there's nothing wrong with that sometimes you have to know like certain motors and certain situations you can get tighter than other ones that have you know really chintzy brackets and everything notice that when i push on that the whole motor flexes because it's in a resilient mount don't really care for those mount i like a rigid mount much better but you don't want to go too tight on something like this um, this one's fine let's make sure it's going in the right direction and it is that's good the filter doesn't look too bad. I can see light through it. Um, I'm going to put this together and we're just going to look at everything else while we're up here. This condenser is plugged. Look at this. Micro channel too. So we'll talk to them about that. We'll bring that up to them. And then when I came up earlier, I noticed that only one of these condenser fan motors was running on this. Now, I made a video on this a couple years back. I have two fan cycle switches, one for each motor. But... What I found odd was the left motor was running, the right motor wasn't even moving a tiny bit, like it hasn't moved at all. So I wanna make sure that it's not locked up. Uh, we haven't even gotten hot yet, so if I find a motor that's failed and we eliminate a service call, that'll save me a Saturday night, Friday night service call kind of a thing. This one right here looks to be okay. So we'll look at everything. All right, so I saw this motor running over here, but this one I did not. Let's get in here and see if it spins. I don't know how well you guys can see it. Oh yeah, it's spinning, it's not locked up. Now, that doesn't mean it's not bad, but it's cold outside right now, so I'm not surprised if it's not running. I just would have expected it to be coasting kind of a little bit or something. Um, but again, doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. What we can do is I can turn it on uh, and we can 
Eh, I'll check on it when I come back. I'm not going to get too involved in it because it's satisfied right now. Let's pop our heads over here. Just open up the ACs. See if anything jumps out at us. No active codes. It says fan only. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too scary in here. Looks like maybe some uh, carbon buildup in the contactors. I can see some white powdery residue. Let's keep going. Check the belt. Definitely a loose belt. And those all look like junk. So we're gonna bring back some belts. That, I'll get the belt information off of that guy. Yeah, it looks like they've been tightening on that thing a lot. I'll get information off that. Let's look at the other ones. So they use a national filter changing company here. That one's got a loose belt too. You can tell that it's loose on the bottom. So we got lots of... So all you gotta do is open your eyes. Look, these customers don't do routine maintenance, but if I'm here, I'm gonna look. Now, I'm not gonna spend my day here maintaining all their equipment. I'm not doing anything with the ACs. But I'm getting all the information so that way when I come back, yep, loose belt too, I can tell the bottom of it's flopping. So. When I come back, we'll bring belts with us. So again, they don't do maintenance. So I'll bring it to their attention. I know that I'm allowed to do this stuff. So this fan's working. The restroom fan should be on. And it's not, that restroom fan should be running. So when I come back, we'll dig into that too. Uh, let's open this guy up. So like I said, just because they don't do routine maintenance, you know, when I'm here, I look. That one doesn't have any active codes, nothing too crazy. Let's check this one out. See what we got going on. No active codes. Looks fine. Just a lot of loose belts, so we'll definitely be bringing back some AC belts too. That's all that I'm doing today, again, not going to waste my Sunday to do routine maintenance besides what I was called for. So I'll uh, get all the information off the belts and uh, we'll come back out with uh, pulleys for this one, pulleys for this, no, pulleys for this one, uh, and then we'll bring spares for the other fans. We'll size up that fan for replacement when we come back and we'll size up this fan for replacement when we come back because they're vibrating. You can see the covers are completely rotted out. They're old. They're beat down. And then this fan was replaced a couple years ago, so we'll just change the pulleys. This fan just needs to be cleaned. We'll tell the customer they need to get their cleaning company out here, and then I'll also document the roof damage from the grease. That grease, uh, it, it will eat the roof away. Clearly, you can see, it's like paint stripper. It's stripping away the paint that they have on the roof. They put some like white epoxy coating or something on there. So uh, they're gonna need to solve that problem. So we'll bring all this information up, we'll bring back the spare belts, and we'll go from there. Good morning, I am back. It is uh, Tuesday, May 9th. It's about 7.23 a.m. Got your first thing, and we are going to be shutting this guy down right now, replacing the disconnect switch, the pulleys, and then we'll be putting a couple extra belts in the other exhaust fans, get them going, and then I'll be sizing up this exhaust fan and this exhaust fan for replacement. But Got to get on this guy, got to go downstairs and turn off the power, and then we'll go from there and get it all finished up, hopefully. All right, so I did this about a month or so ago, and I kind of broke the internet because I didn't install the electrical on the bottom and I came out the top. I get it, everybody was right. I mean, in, you know, best case scenario, I bring both electricals in the bottom and come out the top. I really don't think it's that big of a deal if you seal it right, but I will on this one go ahead and bring both electricals out the bottom. So uh, I'm going to verify there's no power, which I just went and shut it out and locked it out. But I'll verify real quick. Nothing, 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 and then we'll go to ground. Check everything to ground. Two, three, 
One, two, three. No power. We're good to go. Let's get pulling apart on this guy. So, color wise, red, red, blue, blue, black, black. So that should be easy. Color to color. I'm not always perfect. I don't always do everything right. But also, you know, the disconnect switch issue, like on the last one where I came out the top, as long as like, you know, the uh, stuff is done right, it has a gasket, it's a watertight thing. I, I don't think it's the end of the world, but I do appreciate the fact that, yeah, you should be doing it the other way, so. It's all good. Again, I'm not perfect. This is a DIN rail. So there's a clip that holds it in on the bottom and then you pull it out like that. You can tell that this guy had been getting wet because it's cracked on the top. Black, blue, red, black, blue, red. We're good. I prefer these style of switches because they don't have fuses in them. If your breakers are sized appropriately and your motor starters are sized appropriately on three phase equipment, especially exhaust fans, it's best to not have fuses because if you lose one fuse, you single phase it. So I prefer to have a properly sized breaker so that way you can, uh, um, you know, have the breaker trip instead of the fuses trip keep these cheapy screwdrivers from Home Depot. They're like six, seven bucks, maybe 10 bucks at the most. Keep a couple extra in my van. And they are my beater screwdrivers if I have to hit on something. I don't ever hit on these ones because I don't want to break the electrical resistance that the insulated screwdriver has. One thing about these though, is you hit on them too hard, you jam the screwdriver in there, it doesn't work anymore. Try not to do that. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. There we go. Disconnects off. Got the new one right here. We're going back with the Euro style disconnect. safety switch, whatever you want to call it. All right, boom, boom, there you go, just like that. can do our knockouts and do our power. Now this guy I'm going to have to shorten a little bit, but that's good though because it'll make my wires longer. I can go to the top of the disconnect and then come out the bottom. Oh, actually, no. This one is set up to come in this side according to their switch right here. Well, I mean, it really doesn't matter. It's just a switch. So Now cutting conduit with wire in it can be kind of tricky. Some tin snips be your best friend. We'll do it like that. We'll break it and then we'll cut it with either tin snips or wire cutters. We're going to do a few things here.
gonna try and use my wire cutters because I don't have my tin snips up here. So I'm being lazy at the moment. If I can get it with wire cutters, I'll do it. If not, I'll go get the tin snips. this up then the new fitting will go right on it and we'll be good to go when you take these apart be careful they come the way that they should go a lot of people get confused on how they go together so if you don't know pay attention when you take it apart the, the bushing and everything is in a particular place. Perfect. There we go, there we go, there we go. Now, I need to go get a regular drill. We'll drill this guy in, put it right there, and then we'll bring the other one over and then down here. And we have to make sure it's long enough for it to hinge, which will be fine. We'll be good to go. I'm gonna go get a drill. Now what we're gonna need to do, pull this guy out, pull this guy out. We're gonna have to drill these holes real quick. On the bottom. I'm gonna pop this guy out so that way the little plastic shavings don't get in there. To drill these guys. Put a torque spec on here. Interesting. Oh wait, maybe right here. No, that's interesting. They don't put a torque spec on it. Oh well, it'll be fine. All right. Yeah, I like to make all three wires the same length, so that way if you ever needed to switch them, you can. So I make them all go to the last hole, and then that way we have all the room we need to. When you're dealing with stranded wire, tight, loose, tight, loose, you can set the wire in place, kind of smash it down. And I realize a lot of people say I should be using ferrules. It's not pretty common here. So, see, I got them all tucked in there nice and good, out of the way. So now we'll work on doing this condo. We're gonna make a new conduit up to this motor right there. When you're dealing with metallic liquid type, a bandsaw is your best friend for cutting it. You can do it by hand too, but I like using a bandsaw.
need to get a new blade. long enough for the exhaust fan to be hinged. But not too long. You want the porridge to be just right. It's like Little Red Riding Hood. Okay, I'm gonna hinge it real quick. Plenty long enough. I'll just measure it. One foot, two foot, three foot, four foot. So we'll get a little bit extra. And I'll run down and go get the three phase wire, black, red, blue, and a ground. For a run this small, there's no need for a fish tape. I'll be able to push the wires through. The trick is to just pull off one of the ends. Sometimes you can get it through, but most of the time you'll have to pull off the end. We'll try. Oh, oh, came right through. Perfect. Sometimes you get lucky. If it doesn't come through, then just pull off one of the little bushings and it'll come it'll pop through. Usually it gets caught on the bushing. Okay, we're gonna check the phase rotation. It's going in the right direction, and all is well. So I'm going to close it up and then we're going to work on the pulley now. I use an impact every day, but I know how to let go of the trigger. It's sad to say that a lot of people don't. They strip everything out. You also have little settings on here too. Personally, I don't use the settings. I just know trigger control. I'm gonna clean up my messes, and then we'll do the pulleys. All right, first and foremost, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little penetrating oil, set it on there, let it sit, and let it get down into there. Okay, that way these things come apart easier. Okay, so this one's a cool one. This fan is level, therefore, we should be able to see that pulley's level. That pulley's almost level. We should be able to level this out. I can look at it and tell that it's not aligned properly. So we are gonna fix that. So I need to verify that all my pulleys are the same. Those are the same. We're gonna set the diameter the same as this one, opening wise, and then we're gonna put them on there and level them out. Wire cutters will be your best friends when pulling out keys. Just use leverage. Okay. Then we want to pull this bottom one. Try not to drop the set screw. I'm going to pull it out completely though because we're going to have to work to get this removed. Sometimes you can get lucky, but I may have to go get my puller. Nope, pulled right off. No puller necessary, that's cool. Okay, now we're gonna set these two the same. not 
not identical pulleys. So we do have to be careful. That's it right there. For this guy, you just need to remove. It's a, uh, it's got a taper bushing. So remove these nuts or bolts and put them in the other holes and it'll separate the taper from the pulley. They're snug and then just tighten them down evenly and it'll separate. We don't really want to use an impact very much. I'll use it to thread, but you can bend stuff and you don't want to do that. It's separated. Now we can use the pulley. We got this new one. We got a new taper, new screws. So the threaded holes on the top of the taper are for removing the taper, and the non threaded holes are for tightening it. You don't want to have threaded going into threaded because it won't tighten right. I'm just going to snug. Nothing tight, so that way we can still go up and down. We got to set our pulley now. And I got to go get some belts. Somewhat tension. Let's go up on this side. There we go. So we're gonna use that as our guide. Now this pull this shaft is dead level. This one is a little funky so we do have to compensate for that but that'll get us in the ballpark okay so we kind of want this to go up just a hair more now when we tighten it there we go Looks pretty darn good can you have a look Pretty good. Looks pretty darn good to me. So we're gonna slowly tighten these, just get them snug. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna go tight with a wrench. One. Evenly. And everything's gonna change when we do that because when you tighten this taper, pulley's going to pull up into it and the taper is going to go down a little bit too. It's going to lock everything in. You want to tighten them evenly. Quarter turns. It's getting pretty snug. Looks pretty darn good. Check it again. Pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. Okay. So now we're going to final fine tune everything with this guy, which it doesn't look bad at all. I think I'm going to tighten it. That's the top. 
Make sure this set screw or the key is going down into it. You want the key as far down as it'll go. Now the set screw on this one goes up at an angle, so it's going to be hitting the key. If you're concerned, pull the set screw out and have a look in there. Make sure you're actually engaging with the key. I'm going to do that right now. Okay, got the set screw out. Yep, it's going right into the key. Perfect. All right, everything is tightened, snugged. I've got a spare belt down below. We're going to turn it on. Super quiet, not making a grinding belt noise. There's a little bit of a vibration to it, but again, they need to clean every one of these fans. But it's a lot quieter. We're not hearing belt noise anymore. It's not slapping anything and it's not gonna prematurely wear down the pulley. So I'm gonna throw a spare belt in there and then we're gonna move on to the other ones. Again, I'm gonna talk to him about all this grease on the roof. Okay, this fan right here is back on and running. Um, got all the information. Now, one thing I wanted to point out, this is all the information I need, okay? But there's more information that could be gotten. What about the RPM of the motor? Now, I happen to know that every one of these motors on this roof, or at least on these small fans, is 1725 RPMs. I know that, so I'm not really writing it down. But that is also good information to get when you're trying to source a new exhaust fan, okay? If you're trying to source a new motor, then you need horsepower, voltage, the RLA of the motor, the frame of the motor, the RPM of the motor, the size of the motor, you need to take that all into consideration. But for me, this is all that I need to convert this fan. All right, I got new belts put on all the ACs, spare belts where needed, exhaust fans are all good, spare belts, got all the information off these two exhaust fans. We're gonna give them a price to replace them. And all is well, they are good to go. So we are going to uh, write up the invoice and tell them to keep an eye on it. So when it comes to the exhaust fans, this particular restaurant, you know, they obviously have cooking appliances down in the building. The cooking appliances produce heat and uh, when they cook the food, there's smoke and other unwanted things in the air. Okay, so you have um, exhaust fans, extractors, whatever you want to call them, but they essentially pull out the unwanted air out of the building. Okay, once they pull out the unwanted air, it goes up to the roof. It's supposed to go through some grease filters. The grease filters help to catch as much of the grease as possible. In a perfect world, if the grease filters do their actual job and they're the right style of filters, there shouldn't be very much grease making it out of the actual exhaust fan. But that's not very practical and it happens, it ends up on the roof, okay? Or ends up stuck inside of the fan. Restaurants should be doing normal routine cleaning on the exhaust fans too. They are actually required by law to have companies come in uh, majority of the restaurants out there only do the minimum requirement when it comes to cleaning of their exhaust fans. Uh, certainly, if they had them cleaned more often, they would have less issues. But there's a fine line between too much maintenance, okay? And this is just something that's in my head. I've never seen any real statistics on this. But in my head, what I tend to notice is that if we go out and we do a lot of routine maintenance on the equipment, we're opening and closing doors, we're taking panels on and off, we're getting our fingers in things, you're going to have things that wear out just simply because you're opening and closing those doors all the time. You're taking screws out, you're putting them back in, you have more odds of stripping out screws. Um, you know, taking covers off, the covers will start getting bent. So there's a fine line between doing routine maintenance and doing too much routine maintenance. Um, again, assuming that humans are doing the work and humans are not perfect, right? We always make mistakes. So of course I want my customers to do more maintenance. Okay. But realistically they need to be doing more as far as grease cleaning for sure. Because once the exhaust fans start to get thrown off balance because the grease will settle and what, what can actually happen is, is when the exhaust fans are running, it's hot most of the time. Okay. And the grease is warm, but when the exhaust fans get turned off at nighttime, that grease cools and sometimes it'll um, drip off of the wheel and then as it's cooling, it'll cool uneven. And then when the exhaust fan gets running in the morning, it'll be out of balance right when it turns on and it'll vibrate until it heats up enough to where the grease can kind of spread out and evenly you know, set itself on the fan. 
if they clean them more often, they really wouldn't have those problems, okay? So now that we've gotten the air moving, right, and the smoke and the unwanted air out of the building, then it's blown onto the roof wherever it needs to be, out into the air, whatever that is, okay? Um, so that's the typical operation of the exhaust fans, right? But then you have to have makeup air. I kind of talked about it a little bit. Makeup air balances out the building. Think of a paper bag. If you put a paper bag around your mouth and you breathe in, the bag is going to collapse, okay? But if you cut a hole in the bottom of the bag, the air will pass through the bag. If you cut the perfect size hole for the breath that you are taking in, the bag will not collapse at all, but you'll just pass the air through. That's the theory of makeup air, okay? I showed the makeup air unit, and I said that it has a couple purposes. Number one, to balance out the building. Number two, in most cases, not always, but in most cases, the makeup air also creates an air curtain, okay? The way that the makeup air is diffused across the front of the hood in most cases the air kind of slowly trickles down in front of the hood and it actually creates an invisible curtain that helps to keep that smoke inside the hood. So it's very important that we don't ignore makeup air units when we are diagnosing smoke rollout issues and things like that in exhaust systems, okay? But with exhaust systems, I can't stress enough, routine maintenance is a must, okay? Um, loose belts especially in uh, high volume restaurants, even the slightly loose belt can cause problems, right? Because these buildings oftentimes are uh, set up and air balanced to maintain the most energy efficient building, okay? And if that belt starts to slip or even becomes loose ever so slightly, then that exhaust fan doesn't perform anymore and the building as a whole starts to suffer. And we gotta think about that too. When you're thinking about a restaurant, it's not just the exhaust fans. It's not just the makeup air, right? Because we get fresh air from the ACs too. Now we're typically gonna get more from the makeup air unit if the building actually has a makeup air unit. And then we're gonna pull a little bit from the air conditioning units too. Um, and that's gonna just start affecting everything, right? If, uh, if you're not exhausting all the smoke and the unwanted air out of the building, then the air conditioners are gonna have a hard time keeping up because there's gonna be added heat load to the building. So the building operates as a whole, just like your house does too with air, within regards to air movement and different things, okay? So it's really important that you have a general understanding of how exhaust systems work when you're going out to work on them. In this situation, they said the flat top wasn't working. So I went out there and the flat top, everything was going good except for the fan had some grease buildup. So I didn't just say, hey, it's working, I'm out. I looked at the other fans and I found a lot of work on that roof. I got to spend uh, two days, the, the original service call, and then a second day going out there changing the disconnect switch and replacing all the other belts. And then on top of that, I'm quoting to replace three exhaust fans. I didn't show you guys, but the restroom exhaust fan has a bad motor. It's really beat up. The fan is trashed. And then they have those other two exhaust fans. So I'm not doing anything shady. I'm doing what the customer wants. And I'm just observing, looking at the big picture. Came back a second day. I didn't have to waste my Sunday. I did the, the, the problem at hand. I addressed it on Sunday. And then I came back the following Tuesday and, and went through everything else. So you don't have to just go into this call with blinders on, you know, look around, pay attention, use your senses, generate more money for your company ethically, right? You're not ripping anybody off, but you're ethically generating more money. You're keeping yourself busy. You're getting yourself hours. You're making the company happy, right? You're helping the customer, right? So there's so many different positive things that can come from you just looking at the big picture. It's so important. I really, really appreciate you making it to the end of the video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and check out my website, hvacrvideos.com. I talked about the new hats that we have available. We have the, um, the two new hats that I added to the line are the flat bill hat right here. That's a snapback flex fit. And then we have the relaxed dad hat uh, with the adjustable back right there. So uh, check them out on my website, hvacrvideos.com. We obviously still have my favorite hat, the original cool and dry fit, um, standard flex fit hat. But anyways, uh, if you're interested in helping to support the channel, the easiest way to do so is simply watch the videos from beginning to end. It's, it's that easy, okay? Uh, if you want to financially support the channel, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube channel memberships, there's links in the show notes of this video. You can find out more about those. Uh, remember that myself and my friends try to go live Friday evenings on the HVAC Overtime YouTube channel. 
uh, this last week, uh, yesterday, actually, today is Saturday, May 13th. So on May 12th, we had Ryan Hughes from the Hughesman HVAC YouTube channel and the Misfits of HVAC podcast. So it was a really cool hangout interview with Ryan. Uh, definitely go check that out. And then work permitting, I try to go live on my YouTube channel, Monday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific, uh, work permitting again. I keep saying that, but sometimes I have to cancel it. So I really do appreciate you all. Thank you very much. And uh, we will catch you on the next one. Okay.